Hello readers, welcome to today's book. Today I'm going to take you into another land. To a place called Animalia. And you're going to come with me and be a little detective. You're going to help me find animals and objects inside the pages of the book I'm going to read to you called Animalia. You are going to see so many things inside the pages of this book in the land of Animalia. So, so many that you're going to need to write them down to remember them. So by the end of the book, you will have 26 lists. A list for each letter of the alphabet. Now, how many things do you think you'll be able to find in the book called Animalia? Are you ready? Come with me into the land of Animalia and see what you can see. Have you got a piece of paper and pencil ready? Animalia by Graham Bass. Within the pages of this book, you may discover, if you look, beyond the spell of written words, a hidden land of beasts and birds. For many things are of a kind, and those with the keenest eyes will find a thousand things, or maybe more. It's up to you to keep the score. A final word before we go. There's one more thing you ought to know. In Animalia, you see, it's possible you might find me. I'll show you each page and then I'll take you around the page in a little video. You can pause it any time. An armoured armadillo avoiding an angry alligator. That's the armadillo on the left. The alligator is on the right. Oh, oh I think we found Graham already there hiding behind the tree. You see if you can find him on each page. Write down where you find him. On a page, he's behind the tree. Even if you look a bit closely in those pictures, someone who is running looks a little bit like Graham. On every page, write down the other things you can find that start with that letter. Beautiful blue butterflies basking by a babbling brook. I'm giving you some hints of the things that you can find in the illustrations. Now I'm just going to give you a bit of a closer look that this illustrations in the wings of this butterfly. And some of them start with B, like there's a bed. That's a game called backgammon. What else can you find? Something you ride there starting with B. There's a little bug inside the butterfly wings there. How many things did you find on the A and B page? Let's keep going. Crafty crimson cats carefully catching crusty crayfish. What's that in the background you can see? What's the name of that building that starts with C and the name of that animal next to the cactus? I hope you're writing down all the things you can find starting with each letter. You can pause the video if you need to at any point. Do you 
know, that instrument that's there, that starts with C, I used to play that in high school. Graham on this page yet? There's a picture of Graham on every page, so write down where you find him on the A, B, C, D, E page. My goodness, there's some amazing words in this one. Diabolical dragons daintily devouring delicious delicacies. What a great way of saying really bad dragons are eating beautiful things, but they're doing it gently. Let's have a look at the diabolical dragons and see what other things we can find that start with D. Oh, I can see what he's eating that starts with D. Hmm, do you know what that is? see someone climbing a tree. You might notice the author has used the same letter for almost every word in the sentence. This is called alliteration. Eight enormous elephants expertly eating Easter eggs. I think that Easter egg is meant for someone called Emily. So many E things to find. At the end of the story, I'm going to list some of them and you can see if you found the same things as me on each page. This is the F page because I can see a flamingo and a fox. Keep looking. Four fat frogs fishing. Four frightened fish. Doesn't look very happy that fish does he? I don't think they want to be caught by the frog. I like the fonts they've used for the text. There's another instrument in the grass there that I used to play in high school. You know that instrument, that silver? Maybe you could use alliteration to describe the things you find in the picture. A giant giraffe. Great green gorillas growing grapes in a gorgeous glass greenhouse. A greenhouse is a room that's made out of glass so that the sun can get to the plants but the plants are a bit protected from the wind and other weather. 
and they can stay a nice warm temperature. So many instruments. The gorillas almost look like they're growing grass instead of fur. Wonder where Cheeky Graham is hiding this time. Inside that shed. Hmm. I see something there. There's so many hidden things, isn't there? Horrible hairy hogs hurrying homeward on heavily harnessed horses. Sometimes we put harnesses around our dogs when they're walking too. Those hogs are pretty wild looking, aren't they? Those wild pigs. Hope you're remembering to write down all the things you can find on each page that start with that letter and trying to find Graham. I'm trying to find him too. Goodness, this is an amazing illustration, isn't it? With those horrible, hairy hogs. Let's just have a quick look down on this farm. Make sure we're not missing anything. Oh, that's a very beautiful bird. What is that creature? Do you know his name? Some amazing words again. Ingenious. What an amazing word is that? That means very clever at something. Ingenious iguanas improvising an intricate impromptu on impossibly impractical instruments. What on earth does that mean? It means the animal is an iguana and he's making up, improvising, a intricate, which means very complicated, Impromptu, which is a song you just make up on the spot. You don't read the music or rehearse. On impossibly impractical instruments. Now, what would be an instrument that's impractical? Not practical, not easy to use. I don't even know what this instrument is, but they're very big. They would be hard to carry around or put in an instrument case. What on earth are they doing with an iron? The iguana's beautiful colours. And I never knew iguanas could be so smart. To be described as ingenious. If you have an instrument at home, you could improvise on it, which just means play whatever you like at the time. Look, his tiny fingers 
hardly even cover the holes of the instrument, so it's very impractical. Hmm, a little bit hard to find Graham sometimes, isn't it? This double page is beautiful. We've got one letter on each page. Let's go down to J. Jovial jackals juggling jugs of jelly in the jungle. So we know, okay, that animal must be a jackal. And do they look sad, hang angry, happy? What do they look? What's their emotion? Because the way they're described is jovial. So we think, okay, we, know, we don't know what the word jovial means, but we can see how happy and excited they look. So we can use our very clever reading brains to guess, okay, I think jovial might mean really happy. Look at those jugs way up in the air. You probably don't juggle unless you're very happy. So that gives us another clue that jovial means very happy and fun and alive. Hmm, let's see what other things we can find starting with J. Remember you can pause at any time. Hmm, there's a little illustration here on the tree which you might have missed that you can record in your list. Hmm. Kid Kookaburra and Kelly Kangaroo kidnapping Kitty Koala. And look, it's on King Street. They're very naughty creatures. Oh, I think we've got some amazing police officers chasing them. But have a look. What is going on up here? Hmm. What else? So the club that they're playing in is called the Kaleidoscope. Or they're visiting. Something in the window to make a cup of tea. Look at the badge that that bird, which is a bird from New Zealand, is wearing. And have you ever met a bird that can knit? It sounds like mm, remember, but it's spelt with a K. And he is wearing something that people from Scotland wear. What is that called? Oh, look what he's eating. He must, oh actually I think that's the koala, so she must like Kit Kats. There she is, she looks a bit worried, poor kitty koala. Lazy lions lounging in the local library. Now we've got lions that can read. That's amazing. Let's take a closer look at these pictures we can find. All the authors and all the titles of this book, these books, also start with L. Ooh, there's a mythical creature from Ireland. What's he called? And another instrument and a vegetable. A vegetable is there. And a fruit. Meticulous mice monitoring mysterious 
mathematical messages. A meticulous is very detailed, very clean, very orderly, and they're looking at the mysterious mathematical messages. Question mark one, two, three plus, what on earth might that mean? Okay, let's have a good look at these. Meticulous mice. Look at that funny guy. Ooh, something swimming in the ocean there. There's something we use in science there near the money. Whoops, I just gave you one. He's wearing something. He's drinking out of something. Whoop, another vegetable. Ooh, I love that game. I love that lolly too. And we use that thing, if you know what that's called, to keep in time when we're playing music. Now we're coming over here to see nine nautical newts navigating near Norway. Now let's think about this. Newts must be the animals because that's the pattern that we've seen in the book. Nautical. Let's think about that word. Do you know what that means? Let's look at this picture and see what hints we get about what nautical might mean. Now they're out at sea and they're sailing. Nautical might have something to do with the sea. And they're navigating, that means they're trying to find their way near a country called Norway. Now let's see what else we can find in our picture. Do you know who that is with the crown? Move that over this side. Then we come down to one outrageous old ostrich ordering an onion olip. Sorry, an onion omelette. I got a bit distracted by how happy that ostrich looked. There's another creature on his hat. Or is it a feather? What is that? Let's go a bit closer. There's some interesting things in the illustrations. Oh, who's that guy? Have you ever eaten an omelette? This is amazing. Proud peacocks preening perfect plumage. Now, preening is a thing that a, a couple of other animals, like a cat does, where they clean themselves. And let's have a look at their perfect plumage which is their feathers and as we go in you'll see a whole lot of other things starting with P that you can write down so they're preening themselves you might know the name of that flower now let's see who else is at this great outdoor Party. It's another P word. Lots of creatures. Oop. We 
Here come some people. Oh, that starts with P. I think we can find our friend pretty clearly in this one. Do you know the story of the Pied Piper who plays his pipe and the children follow? What other creatures? What's the name of the person in charge of the country at Egypt? What is that pig riding in? A baby pig, a piglet. And look what we have up here. Oh, who are those two people in front of their palace? You find the thing in brown with the lots of layers in gardens in um, Japan and China and places, starting with P. Now I just want to come over here to our font because in the background there, there's a very famous building. Can't see that very well. And what can we see behind there? Quivering quails queuing quietly for quills. If you're quivering, you're kind of shaking, so maybe they're a bit nervous. And they're queuing up in a line, just like you do sometimes. But they're, they're trying to get a quill, which is what people used to use to write with. They would sharpen the end of a feather and dip it into some ink. But look at this cheeky guy. What is he doing up there? Try and write a few things off each page that you can find that start with that letter. We're learning some pretty interesting words in this story. Okay, then we're going to come across here. Because that was, hang on. Oh, that's a robot. He doesn't belong in the Q page. He must belong in the R page. That's one of my favourite animals, actually. Richly robed rhinoceroses. That means they've got a beautiful robe on. Riding in rickety red rickshaws. Now, I used to have a car that was a bit rickety. It didn't work very well and it kept breaking down. A rickshaw is an old type of transport where the people, or the animals in this case, would ride in the little carriage and it would get pulled along by some animals. So this time, we'll just have a look in here. This time it's not being pulled along by animals because animals are riding in it. It's being pulled along by those robots. Oh my goodness, how are we going to look at all of these? pictures there's so many of them I'm going to take a photo of them and I'll put a photo in so you can pause and have a really good look through but let's see what it is six slithering snakes sliding silently southward where are they going my goodness you're going to find so many things in these images I've just started at the top again so that you can go down the right hand side. But before I do, who do we see who is sailing? Maybe those slithering snakes are chasing Graham. So many pieces of clothing in that picture that start with S. Oh, my favourite food, a sandwich. Okay, so I'll take a photo and you can have a look and pause. We'll come across here and we'll go to T. 
two tigers taking the 1020 train to Timbuktu. Timbuktu is a place that people talk about in Australia. <laughs> They're cute creatures, having some tea. And look, if they need to go to the toilet, they can do that too. The Timbuktu Torpedo, that's the name of the train. It must go very fast. Look at that toad on his bike. And then we'll come down to another one of my favorite mythical creatures. That means they don't really exist. Unruly unicorns upending urns of ultramarine umbrellas. My goodness, unruly. So they can't be very well behaved if they're knocking over containers of umbrellas. So unruly means a bit out of control. Up upending means when you turn something upside down. And this is the urn. Ultramarine is a really fancy way of saying blue. I never thought I would see the day when unicorns were upending urns of ultramarine umbrellas. What a great book. We're going to start V up the top here with these suspicious looking creatures. Victor V. Vulture, the vaudeville ventriloquist, my goodness, should we start again? Victor V. Vulture, the vaudeville ventriloquist. So vaudeville is a type of show. We'll see the vulture and we'll see what a ventriloquist is when we go down. Versatile virtuoso of vociferous verbosity, vexatiously vocalizing the Valhalla variety venue oh my goodness that was such a mouthful there is the vulture that big bird and he it has a puppet in front of him and ventriloquists will pretend to make the puppet talk but their own mouths won't move you might have seen that somewhere we'll have a look at the pictures and then we're going to have a look at that text again. My goodness. Victor V. Vulture, the vaudeville ventriloquist. So we know that vaudeville is the show. Ventriloquist is the person that puts on that special puppet show. Versatile, virtuoso, that means he can do a lot of different things. And he, vocalizing, that's a big word that we can focus on means talking vexatiously goodness that's an unusual word can you guess what it might possibly mean sometimes we have to use the rest of the words sometimes we have to use the images we know he's not crying let's see if we can work out vexatiously Goodness me, they're the biggest wasps I've ever seen in my life. Let's have a look at this picture and then we'll find out what the text says. Wicked warrior wasps wildly waving warlike weapons. A warrior is a fighter. They look a bit wicked don't they look at their faces now hang on Graham what have you done to us here well firstly we can see you there on the card on this mirror but why is the text back to front so the sound is X so I guess there aren't that many words that start with X that he might be able to use. So it looks like he's used words that end in X. Rex, Fox, 
fixing six saxophones. So fixing and saxophones have the X in the middle. He's very clever. Reversing the front font and tricking us like that. Very tricky, Mr. Bass. Okay, we're coming across to some youthful yaks yodeling. Have you ever heard anyone go yodeling? That's yodeling in yellow yachts. So we can see, okay, the yachts must be the boats because we're using our picture cues. Can you imagine that big yak going yodelolololehiho? Be a very unusual sound. Oh, there's another creature, a mythical creature that people try to find in the forest. What's he called? I don't know if I would like to sail on a yacht called the SS Yogurt. Doesn't seem very solid and safe, does it? This is our last page. Here comes Zed. Zany zebras zigzagging in zinc zeppelins. Now, this book is a bit zany, actually, which means crazy. You know what zigzagging means. It goes from side to side. And we don't know what a zeppelin is, but if they're in it, this must be what a zeppelin is. Okay, so we can use our book cues, pictures and words, and our own knowledge to work out that that must be a zeppelin. And if zinc is describing it, we think, oh, they're all silver, so maybe zinc is a metal. So sometimes if you don't know what words mean, you can use those skills to try and work it out. And of course, you can check in a dictionary or by asking a friend. Oh my goodness, there is our friend Graham. He's made this amazing book, he's put himself in it, and now he's sailing off with some zany zebras zigzagging in zinc zeppelins. Now I hope you've got your list of items you found on every page for each letter, and I hope you've written down where you found Graham. I'm going to show you some photos now and I'm going to put the list of some of the things that were on that page. Of course I wouldn't be able to put all of them because that would take so long but we'll see if mine are the same as yours and we'll see did you find Graham on each page. That book is so much fun isn't it? Okay let's look at our lists. You can pause to tick things off your list. There are so many for the letter C, so make sure you stop and pause and tick off the ones you have got. I bet you've got even more than me.
I'm about to show you where Graham was on each page. On the A page, Graham is behind the trunk of the tree. On the B page, underneath the antenna, he's walking in the fields. On the C page, he is playing cricket behind the wickets. On the D page, his hand is there in the pool of water, but also he is up in the tree. On the E page, he is hiding with his little hand sticking up behind the elephant. On the F page, he's up in the trees near the fish. On the G page, he's out of the window. On the H page, his hand's coming out from behind the second hog. On the I page, he's in jail and his hands are around the bars. On the J page, he's behind the jackal's tail. On the K page, he's in the window. On the L page, he's on the cover of that book. On the M page, he's hiding behind the cupboard. On the N page, he's under the newt's hand. You can see his hand. On the O page, he's a drawing behind the ostrich. On the P page, he's in the party. On the Q page, he is hiding up there on the, behind the pole. On the R page, he is there under the letter R. On the S page, he's sailing out at sea. On the T page, he's a ticket seller. On the U page, he's flying off under an umbrella. On the V page, he was really hard to spot, but he's up in the corner of the sign. On the W page, he's driving the wagon. On the X page, we already found him in his card up on the mirror. And on the Y page, he's there behind the yak's paw. And there he is driving the Zeppelin in the... Oh my goodness, wasn't that the most amazing book? I hope you had an absolutely fabulous time finding all those things and finding Graham. I'll see you next time for our next book. Bye.